general. Now, in general, you want to have work in there. So for all of you engineers, you're gonna have work in there. Um, <clears throat> when we do work in a conservative field, then all of the work that we put into that field is going to be equal to the work that we get out. So let's just say that we have ourselves an object here. Okay. And we lift this object up to this location. All right. Once we lift that object up to that location, it's going to take us a certain amount of work to do that. We're going to call that our initial work. We if we let the object go, the object is going to fall back to its original location. To its original location. When it falls back to its original location, this is our final work. So basically, we push the object up and gravity pulls the object down. So we call that a conservative field. Electric fields are conservative, magnetic fields are conservative. Um, at least that's what I believe that they're conservative. So if you do work on a charge in an electric field and you're opposing its force, then you let it go, it'll push that charge back. The same with the magnetic field. Okay, <clears throat> so if these two things are equal, that means if work initial is equal to work final, Therefore, we can write delta W is equal to zero. So we can write after that, we can say zero equals to the kinetic energy in the final state minus the kinetic energy in the initial state plus the potential energy in the final state minus the potential energy in the initial state. This implies that we can write all of our potential energy, I mean, all of our initial energies on the left-hand side. It should be therefore we can write, I just don't want to keep saying therefore. But I guess I could use therefore thus Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we have our kinetic energy plus our potential energy in the initial state, and then we have our kinetic energy plus our, our potential energy in the final state. So how is that going to ultimately look? That's going to look like this. One half mass times the initial velocity squared plus mgy initial equals to one half mass times the final velocity squared plus M G Y final. So we have ourselves, we're utilizing the conservation of energy. Um, and in this particular case, we want it for a reason. We're going to fire our ball again, and we want to use this technique to calculate the initial velocity. We're very, very familiar with the initial velocity already. But we want to calculate the initial velocity using this technique. So let's analyze this. <clears throat> if we set the origin right here, we know that x initial and y initial both equal to zero. So this piece of the equation will go away. Now, we're, again, we're looking for our initial velocity, so we don't let this one go away. We want to see when we want to observe when this ball comes to rest. So when the ball comes to rest, if we're using that kind of language, the final velocity is going to be zero meters per second. So we can just get rid of this piece as well. See, when you're doing your experiments, you want to just be strategic in how you're going to do it. I mean, after you do them again and again and again, you will become more and more strategic. But we have our final Y here, and our final Y it's going to be, you have your X final and your Y final for your last ordered pair. And we don't necessarily know what the Y final is. So we're gonna use video physics to calculate that. And this is ultimately what we're going to be calculating. We're gonna have one half MV initial equals to MGY final 
the m's go away because they're on both sides of the equation. And we end up with v naught squared equals to 2gyf. And this implies, or this implies that v naught is just equal to the square root of 2gyf. This is the theory that we're going to be utilizing. We're using these ideas, but this is the equation that we're going to use to uh, produce our initial velocity.